Tim maturity. Team maturity is one of the most common things that team leaders don't don't take into account when they uh, when they decide what to do as a team leader. So the way I see team maturity in, in software teams is that there are three type three levels, and teams usually go a lot between all those three. The first one is chaos. Uh, uh, the chaos level for a team is when the team doesn't have any time to learn or to try things so for example if you keep putting out fires you don't have any time to learn you can't even take an hour to try a new technologies or new practices or you don't even have time to give your team members things that they can actually make mistakes with uh, you, you don't let them learn because you're, you're afraid of not hitting schedules or you just your schedule is so unmanageable that there's always something more important to do than to take a day for the team to do something else or half a day to learn or three days to do a TDD course for example so chaos stage is defined by having no time to learn and in the chaos stage the purpose of the team leader is to get the team out of chaos stage to get the team into learning and there are multiple ways to do that uh, but usually it involves taking a few risks personally and re removing some of the current commitments of the team. So actually talking to management and all the stakeholders. It also involves uh, setting up uh, a month in which you try to finish whatever commitments you can do in a month uh, and from then on recommit to things where you actually have more time to, to learn. So once the team has time to learn, that's the second stage in that's the learning stage and in the learning stage the purpose of the team leader <coughs> is very different or the, the way the leader would work is very different than the way they would work in chaos you see in chaos because p p the team doesn't have time to learn the team leader would usually do everything needed to get the team out of there and there's a sentence that I've heard that makes a lot of sense for that situation when the ship is sinking the captain doesn't hold a meeting they start giving orders and that's what happens in the chaos stage but in the learning stage the purpose of the team leader is very different the purpose of the team leader in the learning stage is to get each member of the team to be better as a team member or as a developer uh, or as a team leader themselves than they were the week before so you you should measure yourself in the learning stage by how much growth does your team as a team or individually have and the purpose the big purpose of the team leader in the learning stage is to remove themselves as a bottleneck from the team um, as an example uh, if uh, a team member comes to you and they have a problem for example they have a very slow machine or they don't know how to solve something and you do the worst thing you can do for them in the learning stage is to solve their problem for them because then they would never learn in fact they, there is one thing that they do learn instead and, and that is that every time they have a problem they should come to you and that would make sense if you were in the chaos stage where you need to shield the team but in the learning stage you need to burst the team of, out of their own bubble to get them out of their comfort zone and to get them to start learning things that they would never have learned themselves if you didn't push them to it. It's kind of like a mother bird pushing her son out of the nest uh, to so they he can take his first steps fly, flying. Sure he might break, break his leg but that's why you have time to learn because you're able to take those risks. Um, so as a team leader in the learning stage you will do a lot more delegation of course in a managed ways that is you would actually keep an eye on each person as they grow you might even give them some homework uh, sort of growing opportunities that are not part of work so that they can get better at something for example someone who needs to learn how to touch type uh, people who are afraid of facing the bureaucracy of the current system that they they're in um, <clears throat> and there is a and there is a sentence that I like to uh, to use uh, called what are you going to do about it so if a team member comes to me with something and I recognize it as a growth opportunity 
I would usually ask them, what are you going to do about it? And this can be very, very annoying if you're, if this is the first time you've ever encountered this as a team member. And I remember being really annoyed uh, with my team leader when they first said it to me. Uh, and I'll dedicate a whole video for that. But the point is to challenge people and to give them your back so that they can go and try to do something that they are afraid to do right now. That's really enabling them to, to become better at something. Um, and that's the learning stage. And when you, you get really good at the learning stage, people learn how to solve their own problems. And the magic is that when people learn how to solve their own problems, they don't need you anymore as a team leader to solve their problems. They need you as a mentor, as the person who's setting the constraints for the team or the vision uh, for the group. But you're no longer the bottleneck for knowledge. They learn how to solve their own problems, and that is what makes them uh, getting to the third stage, and that's the self-organizing stage. Now, what's funny about the self-organizing stage is that most of the agile teams, Scrum, and all that stuff, they require your team to be self-organizing to work. But most teams don't have the skill to be self-organizing. They don't have the skill to solve their own problems. They don't have their leaders back to do it. Usually they don't even have time. That's why a lot of Agile projects adoptions fail because the team is trying to adopt something that assumes it's able to be self-organizing when in fact the team is really in the learning stage or even in chaos stage. Most teams I've seen are really chaotic where the team wants to do Agile but they don't have time to take a couple of days and learn test-driven development. If you don't have time to learn, you're in chaos. Okay. If you don't have time to take risks, you're in chaos. Now, if you do have that time, you have to have a team leader who challenges you to get better and better. Otherwise, you're not really self-organizing if there is one person on the team, the team leader, who is the bottleneck, where ev everyone comes to them to solve everything. The point of a self-organizing team is that they solve their own problems. And in the self-organizing team, the team leader is really a mentor or, or what people would call a scrum master. Only it's a, it, they are a scrum master with authority, which I personally prefer. prefer because uh, the team can go from self-organizing to chaos just like that. When the project changes, technology changes, life changes. And when that happens, the leader has to realize that it, that, that happened and change their leadership type. That's why I call this whole concept elastic leadership because the type of leadership is bends and adapts itself to the current situation. Um, Gerald Weinberg called this in his book congruent management where you are in charge of your current situation, you're aware of it, you're aware of what you feel and what other people feel as well. So you adapt to what's currently happen, happening in the current situations. And most team leaders are not. They're trying to do something when the team is something else. For example, you might be a team leader who's having a self-organizing team, but you're still doing those daily stand-ups in a very, very structured way. When the team can actually do the stand-ups themselves, you're just there to, to notice and teach people and mentor them. So in the next episodes, I'll talk about the other nine things that team leaders sometimes can make mistakes with. Cheers. See you more. You can see more at fivewise.com.